Hello adventurers, welcome to Shifted Reality, Season 1, Episode 2, where I embark on adventures with my family on a shared SMP server, along with the friends we meet along the way. Ah, the nether. Now, I'm actually pretty excited that the portion of the nether, the nether biome that is closest to our bases happens to be a crimson biome. Yeah, get out of here, I don't need you. And I'm going to show you why, because I have plans for, let's see, Aspies, come here. Come here, piglins. I have some shiny gold for you. Come on, come get it, come get it. There you go, you know you want it. There you go, you know, oh, wait. You weren't supposed to pick it up. Oh, at least I should get a barter out of this, right? Uh, excuse me. Excuse me, aren't you supposed to give me something for that? Oh, now I don't even feel bad about what I'm going to do to these guys. Alright, so I have plans for these piglins. Specifically, these piglins with the crossbows. Now, I'm trying to catch up in the boat... I really just need one in a boat at the moment. But let's see here. Maybe if I can drop a piece of gold over here. So when I break the boat, he'll immediately rush over and fall through the portal. Just gotta be careful I don't throw it off the edge or into the portal itself. There we go. Alright. So, oh. Uh oh. This might not work. Oh, hit him again. Alright, no, yep, now they're definitely mad at me. Definitely mad at me. Time to go. Time to go. Come on through. Alright, well, that didn't work, but. Third time's a charm. Okay. So now I break the boat. And he should go right on through it, right? There we go. And now he's going to be a little bit mad at me, so hopefully he doesn't kill me when I follow through. Uh, where did they go? Oh, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, they're mad at me. They're mad at me. Don't worry. They won't be mad for long. Just let them calm down. Ah, uh, come on. Let that sunrise soothe your soul. You won't be mad at me too long. Yes. Now sunlight will turn the piglins into the zombified piglins, obviously. And I don't need that guy down there because he just had the gold sword. I could get that from lightning and a pig. No, no, this guy. This guy I want. Because the only way to get a zombie piglin with a crossbow in bedrock that I'm aware of is to have them come from the nether and convert into the zombie form on the surface. At which point they become docile or passive mobs until such a time as someone attacks them. And then they will attack back and defend themselves. So how do I get you out of this hole and back up to my base for what I am looking for. Yeah, I don't have a ton of the mine carts and rails. Uh, maybe I'd have more if I went back to the mines to the abandoned mine chests to mine out more. But for now, at least, I think I have enough I can just do this like one step at a time. It might take a little while, but I'll get there. Please hold while I just kind of show this guy the way home. Here we go. Little push, and he's off. Clean up and repeat the process. And soon we have the zombie piglin zipping his way on to the wonderful home. Okay, so here we have an add on that dispenses mob heads. And I had a villager trading head, and I was hoping I could put it on the zig 
the zombified piglin to make him look a little less intimidating. But I don't, so I just put on a regular iron helmet. Now, this is an idea I've wanted to do for a while, is just to have these crossbow piglins hanging around my base. All right, now that I have my first zombie piglin guard in place, I thought I would go pay a visit to my daughter and see how her build is coming along for her starter base. Now, as I look around here, I see some really good design elements, the circular offshoot of this balcony area. But at the same time, I also see a lot of starter flaws that a lot of us kind of fall into right now when we were first starting out, such as the large solid walls, nothing to incept or break the monotonous pattern that Minecraft vanilla can end up having at times, especially when you use the same block on top of each other. So I am going to give my daughter a little bit lesson in some design elements that can really help her build pop a bit more. But we're also going to need some glass for her windows, so let's go down and take care of that because apparently this is where she is keeping her furnace. All right, and now we've collected some additional types of woods, and you can see we've already started making some base adjustments. By using the cobblestone stair on the outside part of the window, you get that little bit of a step in that gives more of a transition for the eye to see. But on the second level, we're going to use that step in by indenting the walls away from the structural support here, here. And there we go. Oh, there we go. Now, since we're using the much larger indent from the support walls to the interior walls, this will also give us the opportunity to indent from the inside out as well as the outside in. And you're going to see what I mean in just a minute here. All right, I give her the selected brick palette, or block palette, I should say, and she is going to work at creating the new interior walls for the second floor. All right, now that we have the second floor mostly done, you can see how we were able to use the stairs on the inside to add the indent so the walls aren't so straight and flat all the time. It gives a little bit of a windowsill feel that we weren't really able to accomplish on the downstairs because there's nothing incenting the downstairs from the outside, which is the first place people are going to see any build when they come into it. Let's see if we can't get a good angle to view our progress. You'll notice the combination between using glass panes and glass box as was needed. And with that short little lesson for my daughter aside, it's time to get back and look at our base again. Okay, so for this next part of the build, again, I wanted to do a storage system. And I'm thinking the ground space should be about two, two chunks or so. And so I framed that out as you see what that would look like. And it extends over the edge of the mountainside into the cliff. And I wasn't originally intending to build down there. But now that I'm looking at where these support beams are kind of laying out, marking where that is, I'm thinking I can make that work. Because again... I've had to be a janitor to Creeper Explosions one too many times on this chest monster. So to make it easier to blend in with the surrounding terrain, the logical thing was, at least at the time, let's dig this 
out. Let's make this all flat so we have a even side on all four areas of these two chunk section that I'm planning to use for my overall storage area. Turned into a little bit deeper of a dive than I intended to be. Okay, that was quite the dig there, and look at what we got. Over five double chests full of just all the stuff, all the garbage that we dug out from our giant hole. Not counting what I have converted into making what I'm going to call the ribs of our design. Now here's something to think about. The next time you are watching a SMP video, and someone's planning out a huge project or even a hardcore video or anything like that and they're like oh i went and collected 10 shulker boxes of dirt and grass to complete this terraforming project that means they have to dig out somewhere this much volume for that project just no food for thought okay so as I said, I laid out the ribs for what is going to kind of drive our texturing design because obviously I don't want these big, ugly gray walls. And I left it open. We're connected to a cave over here. So you can see when someone comes up, if someone comes up through that cave, they can kind of see it poking through. Like this is really firmly foundationed into the cliff side of this mountain. And on this side, we have it equally spaced between the two. This side is even. It doesn't really split up very well. So we have 9, 9, and 10 in the middle. But, you know, we can work with that. And this side is the most off-center because it is actually working with our previous build up above where it has to connect with. So they kind of had to line up with some of the lines from that structure. But overall, I say this is a good start, and let's see what we can come up with for a texturing design. All right, so I, would, I moved part of my chest monster down here, just so I don't have to keep running up and down for supplies as I plan this out. And I'm not really sure exactly what I will need for this, because I don't actually have the build planned out in my head yet. But... I did do the math budget, and it looks like I need to deal with about 53 stacks of material to get all the way up back up to the surface level. So, wish me luck. All right, so I'm thinking something along this line here. I wanted to incorporate arches into the texture, into the wall, just for a bit of a design element, and I'm kind of liking how this is coming out a little bit so we're gonna keep playing with this and see how it goes all right here we are with a breaking point at the top and a little bit of texture on the wall around the brick and deep slate arch and i'm kind of liking yeah no definitely liking where this is going no no i do not need explody friend to help me with my design go away Alright, with that, I am liking how this is looking, how it mirrors and reflects on either side. I just need something to connect in the middle. Now, I wish I could just give a time lapse of how all this plays out, but especially in the early part of this, I really have to stop and think, does this palette work good? Is this working for me? And um, I'm liking where this is. Hanging out, the, the drape is almost like two tapestries, and the texturing is giving a nice rustic feel to it. There we go. I think a little bit of the granite 
texturing to break up the brick pattern a little bit is coming along and like where this is leading. Let's see what we can continue up with. Now with the completion of those three sections, I decided I need to kind of assess where we were going with this internal decoration of the walls and completed bringing around the breaking points in the pattern for all sides. Now this has drawn a little bit of a concern for me because these arch at the bottom definitely will not fit in on either of these sides and the spacing in order to line up with our aforementioned stables at the top way up at the top up here definitely will not fit and in addition to that these circular patterns are not going to fit in either of the second level and the on this side the only place it would fit on this level would be right here so this is going to take a slightly different need to approach the sides and the back than it did with the front. So the flow is gonna be a little bit different. I just need to find a way to make it all blend.
have it almost completed from the outside and it's looking really good how it blends in with the existing vanilla generated minecraft terrain now i really like the vanilla minecraft terrain i don't want to have to tear far too much but i am thinking maybe along at some point i might have to add in some rocks or boulders really along the bottom just to kind of cement the keep in its place but as you can see i didn't quite get to every level of it now as you can see here the third layer of the long sides i haven't really been able to think of what to do with them yet so they're not finished and i thought this would be a good time to just pause and reflect because there are lots of times in life when we have a certain goal we want to set for ourselves and we really want to complete a project by a set deadline but life just gets in the way and we are often taught that it is our fault if we let life stop us but never stop enjoying the things that you enjoy just to push yourself to an arbitrary deadline if you don't get to everything done you'll get to it next week just stay focused keep chipping away one little block at a time and one other thing I want to mention was the inspiration, the overall inspiration of this stonework and the brickwork comes from the Masonic lodges that are seen across America. And if you ever have a chance to view one, you can see that they do literal art with the placement of the bricks as they built these Masonic lodges. And overall we can't really do that too much i mean a brick pattern will always be the straight perfect laid brick pattern so you kind of got to mix it up a little bit if you kind of want to try and create that idea that you had some sort of master mason coming through your entire build and just trying to create something that would stand the test of the time and would become iconic and artistic for generations beyond their own lifespan and I'm kind of hoping that's what I'm achieving with using the brick and the deep slate brick as these patterns and we'll see where we go to finish this off put a floor in here and then you can really see where we're going to go overall so with that phase two is not quite complete yet so adventurers please continue to like and subscribe and follow along as we complete and continue our quest to build out the best things that we can do and don't forget to have fun and with that dear adventurers i'm going to bid you adieu and a goodbye till next week as we continue on our phase two expansion of our season one base have a good one goodbye